Had the 707 missed the World Trade Towers, it would have hit the Empire State Building. It's the 1980s, and New York City is a bustling metropolis. Streets are alive with music, fashion, and ambition. Neon lights, Broadway shows, and Wall Street's hustle tower in the city at night. Street vendors, dancers, and crowds are everywhere. New York City was seen as one of the best cities in the whole world. Even 40 years ago, New York City was one of the biggest financial capitals of the world, as everybody wanted to go to New York City to get their fair share of the American dream. Media showed the city of New York as a dream city. Everything and everybody was civilized, and the latest technology was available everywhere. The streets were clean, and the parks were green, and New York City was the best city. Above the vibrant streets of New York City stood the impressive skyline of Manhattan. Hundreds of skyscrapers were visible, but among them, two of those stood out. The World Trade Centers 1 and 2, boasting an impressive height of 415 and 417 meters, earned them the title of the world's tallest building for three years. Both the towers had 110 floors and were used for office space and radio companies. New York had always been a hub for aviation, even in the early 80s. Many airlines flew to New York's biggest airports, like John F. Kennedy Airport and Newark in New Jersey. Planes like the 747, Concorde, and Boeing 707 were all visible, coming from different destinations around the world. One of the airlines that operated to New York City were called Aerolíneas Argentinas and were the flag carrier of Argentina. On the cold morning of February 20, 1981, the Aerolíneas Argentinas Flight 342 and route from Buenos Aires to New York City's John F. Kennedy International Airport, which was operated by a Boeing 707-300B, took off from its first airport and was scheduled to land in New York City at 10 p.m. Flight 342 took off from Buenos Aires at around 8 a.m. and headed for its first stop in Guayaquil, Ecuador. The flight refueled and departed at 1.30 a.m. for a quick stop in Miami International Airport. The aircraft stopped in Miami for circa 25 minutes and departed from Miami at 6.30 p.m. It was scheduled to land somewhere around 9.30 p.m. in New As Flight 342 approached New York City, the fatigue started to get to the pilots. They had been flying for nearly 14 hours and the hazy weather in New York City was not helping at all. The tall skyscrapers of New York, normally visible due to their bright lights, were not visible at all, as a thick layer of fog covered their windscreen, limiting the visibility to near zero meters. The pilots were nearly unable to see anything now, and they had to rely solely on their instruments and the air traffic control. The air traffic control online at that time was Donald Zimmerman. The intended plan for their approach to runway at JFK was for them to cross by the waypoints KMCHI and BUZON enabling them to stay away from the tall skyscrapers of Manhattan. However, due to the thick haze and fog that blanketed the city, Flight 342 missed both waypoints and was now on collision course with the World Trade Center North's top floors. Thankfully, to avoid such incidents, a new ground proximity radar called TRACON was installed at New York City's both airports a few weeks prior to the incident. The new proximity radar was supposed to alert pilots if they descended below a safe altitude and were in collision course with the skyscrapers. New York City had had its fair share of near misses in the past and TRACON was supposed to reduce the risk of this happening. Air traffic control was being monitored by Donald Zimmerman at the time, the only officer online. Due to the TRACON system, being monitored by Zimmerman, the air traffic control realized that the aircraft had descended into a dangerously low 1,500 feet due to the misunderstandings of the instructions from the pilots. As the 707 was merely seconds away from collision with the World Trade Center, it was noticed by Donald Zimmerman, the one monitoring Tracon at the time. He immediately ordered the 707 to take a sharp right turn bearing heading 180 and ascend to 3,000 feet. The 707 obliged, and disaster was avoided. 
thanks to the quick actions of the flight crew of the Flight 342 and the actions of Donald Zimmerman, Flight 342 was able to avoid disaster and make a safe landing at John F. Kennedy International Airport later that night. Later analyzations of the accident revealed that Flight 342 was merely a minute away from colliding into the top floors of the North World Trade Center. This would have killed all 49 passengers and 9 crew on board, but the death toll from the impact to the building would have been much higher. Thankfully, Donald Zimmerman was able to prevent this from happening, and he saved all those lives that could have been lost. The FAA cited Zimmerman with outstanding technical skill after his actions on the night of February the 20th. Aerolíneas Argentinas went under investigation for Flight 342 in order to find out why the near miss to the towers had happened. The same route from Buenos Aires to the New York City International Airport had had two near misses in the past, and this was a major security concern for the FAA. The story of Flight 342 is very unknown, but an important one. If the collision with the World Trade Centers had happened, this would have changed aviation history as we know it. Perhaps this could have even led to the implementation of safety measures preventing the attacks of 9-11. In conclusion, Flight 342 would have altered the world as we know it if it had collided with the World Trade Center. We should be grateful that nothing happened on the night of February 20, 1981, and this should be seen as the importance of air traffic control. Even though the old World Trade Centers don't stand today, it is important to remember their history and always pay respects to the near 3,000 people who perished in the later 9-11 attacks. I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to subscribe for more videos like this.